EAAs versus BCAAs versus leucine. There's definitely some people that argue EAAs. Um, I think it's like very, it's, there's so much, the data is all over the place on like some of it looks at whole body uh, protein synthesis versus muscle protein synthesis, which is two totally different things. And you can't extrapolate that data like from whole body protein synthesis to muscle protein synthesis necessarily. Um, And then there's uh, kind of the refractory nature of, of leucine that like you can't just take leucine all day long and be anabolic all day long. Uh, there's this refractory effect, like where you can only spike it so often mm-hmm. and get benefit. So I would, I, I think EAs are super expensive and don't taste that great. And I just don't see the value versus BCAAs or, or leucine. I think, BCAs or leucine are fine. I think spiking your meal with leucine can make sense in a pill. Like you can just take one capsule of leucine or HMB or something like that. BCAAs could work if you're cutting. That's again, I think the time that it might make sense is when you're on a deep cut and maybe calories matter and you don't want to eat as much protein. You're getting enough protein uh, to be anabolic, but you don't want to keep adding to calories and you know the the cut is all the difference so bca yeah. is cool uh the other time when you that say cutting just, sense, just to just cut, cutting fat cutting yes fat. like on a diet or you're trying yeah, to cut body right. fat. just to if someone is listening they don't understand what that is so furthering that would be like if you're on a deep fast and your and your fast goal isn't um like uh autophagy and kind of det- yeah autophagy yeah. detox etc mm-hmm. but your your fast goal is to lose fat faster being a calorie, um yeah. being in a caloric deficit yeah exactly then mm-hmm. bcas would would make sense again maybe on a fast and you may maintain more lean body mass i mean bhb beta hydroxybutyrate um, elevated ketones has been shown to be anti-catabolic mm-hmm. but the bcas could augment that because at some point you're just in a deep enough caloric deficit where no matter like you're actually going to start using some muscle mass. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I know like Dom Diagostino, like on his extended fast would use things like MCTs and BCAAs to stay more anabolic, anti-catabolic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, what are your goals? Like, yeah, maybe if you're a power lifter, like <laughs> someone like Dom and you're, you know, on an extended fast, then those things might make sense. But if, yeah. you know, that's so few people, um, yeah. I think BCAAs, Honestly, I just use them as like a flavored drink sometimes in place of having, you know, a soft drink. And yeah. I know it's, you know, decent for me and I'm really losing nothing and there's not much caloric, uh, you know, impact to it. So yeah. I'm like, no, I don't think you need to have it like, you know, during yeah. every workout and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, everything you just said is literally exactly the three things that I tell, like, cause I've had actually in the last few months, I've had a bunch of clients ask me like, should I? drink, should I be drinking BCAAs? Like things like, I'm sure you get that question a lot. And I tell, Mm -hmm. that's the three things I say. Like, I personally think just exactly what you said, if you are in a calorie deficit, potentially they can be beneficial. If you're cutting hard, like you said, if you're fasting and you're still trying to be as anabolic as possible, they can potentially be beneficial. And if you just like the way they taste, like literally those are the exact three things we are, we have the same mind. (laughs) Actually, I mean, we don't because yours is way more advanced than mine. No, 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 we're we're, we're on it. We're on it. Yeah. 